Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session. Now, uh, as we have seen in the last class, that we are we are, we are basically solving the uh, uh, system performance. To we are, we are trying to predict the system performance, that is the permeate flux and permeate concentration for an osmotic pressure control filtration using the one-dimensional model of mass transfer boundary layer. And the one-dimensional model is also commonly and popularly known as the film theory model. Okay, so uh, we have seen that ultimately we have we have written down the uh, film theory model and we got the one equation v w is equal to k ln c m minus c p divided by c naught minus c p and the solvent flux through the porous membrane that is uh, the osmotic pressure model v w is equal to delta p minus delta pi and we have also seen so let me write down those two equation v w equal to k ln c m minus c p divided by C naught minus C p and V w is equal to L p del p minus del pi. And we have also seen that how delta pi is related to C m minus C p as A 1 C m minus C p plus A 2 C m square minus C p square plus A 3 C m cube minus C p cube. So, we have basically, so therefore, this equation can be expressed in terms of C m and C p and this equation is also expressed in as, a, as another function of C m and C p. But there are three unknown C m, C p and V w and we have two equations. So, we need to have one more equation. So, what is the third equation? Let us look what is the third equation. Third equation is basically a connection, connective equation. connective equation between C m and C p. So, what is the connective equations? There are uh, if you if you look into the definition of real retention, definition of real retention is 1 minus C p by C m. So, this is one route how to connect C, C p and C m solute concentration at the in the permeate and solute concentration on the membrane surface. So, as we have discussed already that real retention is nothing but a an intrinsic parameter of the membrane which connects the uh, uh, concentration of solute on the membrane surface and concentration of solute on the permeate side and it is constant for a particular membrane solute solvent system. So, one and we have also seen how independently the real retention of a solute and membrane system, solute solvent and membrane system can be estimated by conducting a separate set of experiment. So, therefore, real retention can be treated as constant. If you look into the expression of real retention, it can also be interpreted as a partition coefficient. Partition coefficient between of solute between feed and permeate side across the membrane. So, it can be interpreted that by that as well. So, if you if you and if you estimate real retention from a separate set of experiment, we can connect C P in favors of C m and real retention. So, C p can be replaced can be written as C m into 1 minus R r. So, that is how C we get a third equation or extra equation for C p as a function of C m. What is the second idea? The second idea is one can instead of this relation definition of real retention, one can really use the solution diffusion model that we have already uh, uh, you know derived earlier. So, if we are talking about a nano filtration system or a reverse osmosis system, we are going to use the solution diffusion model in order to invoke the third equation. If you are talking about the ultrafiltration, 
or micro or, or you know various lower cut of ultra filtration or higher cut of ultra filtration and uh, then we will be invoking the definition of real retention in order to connect the C p and C m as a third equation. So, let us write down the solution diffusion model. model or there are other variants of solution diffusion model that you can also look into. So, this will be uh, V w C p is equal to B times C m minus C p. So, this is the solution diffusion model, this can be utilized as a third equation in case of reverse osmosis and nano filtration and in case of ultra filtration we can use the definition of real retention to connect C p and C m as a third equation. So, let us look into the case of um, ultra filtration first, because that will be uh, that will be given the uh, an, an easy way of handling the system, then we will be looking into the solution diffusion model and after that we will be look will be examining the various cases of various other cases of variants of solution diffusion model. Okay. So, let us so let us continue with the osmotic pressure model. Uh, uh, the third equation that we have already found out. Okay, let's now let's write down the equations for to 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 solve. We have three unknowns: Cm, Cp, and permeate flux Vw. And three equations now: Vw is equal to Lp del p minus del pi, which will be essentially Lp del p minus a 1 C m minus C p plus minus A 2 C m square minus C p square minus A 3 uh, C m cube minus C p cube. Okay. We have the equation of uh, um, uh, definition of real retention C m is equal to 1 minus uh, C p is equal to 1 minus R r times C m, that is the connection and we have the uh, film theory model V w is equal to k l n C m minus C p divided by C naught minus C p. So, we have three equations and three unknowns C m, C p and V w. Next what I am going to write I am replacing C p in is as a function of C m in equation 1. Suppose, this is equation number 1, this is equation 2, this is equation 3. So, if we combine these two, we will be getting V w is equal to L p del p minus A 1 C m R r minus A 2 C m square 1 minus 1 minus R r square of that minus A 3 C m cube 1 minus 1 minus R r whole cube. Since R r is constant A 1, A 2, A 3 coefficients are osmotic pressure coefficient is constant, delta p is constant for a particular operating condition, L p is constant. So, V w will be a function of some function function of C m and we can write down the now the, th uh, the third equation the film theory model as V w equal to k l n C m minus C p. So, l n C m times R r and this will be C naught minus C m 1 minus R r. Now, this will be another another function of C m. So, this is equation number 4 and this is equation number 5 and uh, so, so, now we will be having two equations and two unknown or, or only because we have eliminated C p in favor of C m in both the equations and equation number 4 and equation number 5 are the two resultant equation. Now, what are these two equations? These two equations are algebraic equation which can be uh, uh, algebraic, uh, algebraic equations and they are basically connected uh, coupled nonlinear algebraic equation and therefore, these two equations can be solved using Newton-Raphson rule uh, or Newton-Raphson method by a guess value of C m. 
So, we, we use a guess value of CM and then we will basically we will be equating equation 4 and 5. So, if we equate the equation 4 and 5, we will be landing up with only one equation in CM. So, comparing equations 4 and 5, we can equate them out. So, this becomes K ln C m r r divided by C naught minus C m 1 minus r r is equal to L p del p minus A 1 C m r r minus A 2 C m square 1 minus 1 minus r r square of that minus A 3 C m cube 1 minus 1 minus r r cube bracket close. So, this will be a, a nonlinear equation in C m only, only unknown is C m. We can cast it in the form of uh, h times C m some function is equal to 0. So, if you take it take take the uh, you know uh, right hand side on the left hand side, then we can write it in the form of some function of C m a nonlinear function of C m algebraic equation. So, therefore, this can be solved using Newton Raphson method. Iteratively. So, once we get the value of C m. So, what will be the output of this? Output will be the C m once you get the value of C m, you can get the value of C p as 1 minus r r times C m and one can get the value of permeate flux as k l n C m minus C p divided by C naught minus C p. We know the value of uh, C p now, we have already estimated, we know the value of C m, we have uh, estimated from this, C naught is known, k is known, v w can be estimated. So, therefore, this is a predictive method of, uh, of, of uh, calculation of permeate flux and permeate concentration as a system performance um, for one dimensional modeling of mass transfer boundary layer and hooking it up with the flow through the porous media for a cross flow filtration system. So, this will be giving you a very uh, you know brief very very good idea about um, the as a, as a first hand calculation for having a system performance and this can really da be done in an entirely predictive mode, because you have not there is no adjustable parameter. If we really know the solute diffusivity, if you so, so what are the input parameters of this um, problem? The input parameters of these problems are the operating conditions. What are the operating conditions? The operating conditions are delta p the transmembrane pressure drop, fit concentration and cross flow velocity that is u naught these three values are operating conditions we and we are already setting them. So, we know their values. Another important operating condition is pH of the solution and the how the pH of the solution will be affecting. pH of the solution will be affecting the osmotic pressure of the solution. So, osmotic pressure relationship is known to us pi is equal to A 1 C plus A 2 C square plus A 3 C cube. These osmotic coefficients A 1, A 2 and A 3 they are known to us. So, this physical prop the what are the other transport coefficients you require? The other transport coefficients you require density, viscosity and diffusivity. We are assuming them to be constant and uh, they, their values are known to us. What are the others? The other two parameters should be known to us. These are basically the membrane performance parameter. One is the um, one indicates how porous my membrane is. There is the permeability of the membrane another was the how selective my membrane is that is the real retention of the membrane. So, in the earlier classes we have already seen how to estimate membrane permeability and the selectivity of the membrane independently and therefore, using the these values only one can really solve permeate flux and permeate concentration in a predictive mode. There is no adjustable parameter in this model and a prediction can be really done and uh, the in the in the process and another para another parameter the membrane surface concentration solute concentration at the membrane surface can be estimated as well. So, therefore, one can really estimate what is the extent of concentration polarization. This is also known as the polarization modulus. So, what is the polarization modulus?
polarization modulus is known as by this ratio C m by C p divided by C naught minus C p or for, 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 for a partially retentive membrane that is R r is not equal to 1. For a, for a completely retentive membrane C m divided by C naught for R r is equal to 1, where C p is equal to 0 and in this case C p is not equal to 0. So, typically the polarization modulus for the osmotic pressure control filtration will be around you know uh, 2 to uh, 2 to 5 in most of the cases and it can be as high as 24 or uh, you know greater than 20 in case of solutes like dextran. So, this polarization modulus will indicate the extent of concentration polarization that will be uh, occurring within the mass transfer boundary layer or the polarization the concentration of solute will suffer within the mass transfer boundary layer. In the next we will be seeing as uh, how we can overcome the assumption that the solute uh, the, the, the uh, transport coefficients uh, the constancy of transport coefficients. Now, as we have discussed earlier the various transport coefficients those are involved in the system are density, viscosity and solute diffusivity. Now, all of them are functions of concentrations. All of them are functions of solute concentration. Out of these three rho is a rho, rho is the weakest function of concentration. followed by the diffusivity. Diffusivity is a slightly stronger function of concentration in some cases. And viscosity is the strongest function of concentration. In fact, viscosity is an exponential function of concentration. Viscosity increases exponentially with the concentration. So, therefore, the if it so, so from the uh, values of polarization modulus, we can see that the concentration polarization becomes very, very dominant in some cases, in some in, in case of some solutes. Therefore, the solute concentration may suffer a 4 folds up to 50 uh, up to 30 folds to 20 folds um, of feed concentration. So, therefore, the thermo the transport coefficients or transport properties will be suffering the most and out of these transport co coefficients the viscosity suffered the most. So, therefore, one has to invoke the viscosity correction factor in order to rectify the mass transfer coefficient. So, that the uh, property variation with, with respect to concentration is taken care of. How that is done? That is done by um, uh, uh, all of us know probably about the Cedar Tate correction factor. So, property correction for variation with concentration. This is known as the famous Seder Tate correction factor and these are included in the Sherwood number relationship. Sherwood modified is Sherwood 0 mu bulk divided by mu at membrane surface raised to the power 0.27. What is Sherwood knot? Sherwood knot is basically the basic Sherwood relationship that we have already discussed for the Liebig equation for the laminar flow through a rectangular channel. Sherwood knot will be 1.85 Reynolds Smith d by L raised to the power 1 upon 3. For what is the 
scheduled knot for the uh, tubular flow 1.62 Reynolds Smith d by L raised to the power 1 upon 3 for the laminar flow. For the turbulent flow scheduled knot will be 0 0.023 Reynolds to the power 0.88 Smith to the power 0.33. That is the, uh, the those are the basic scheduled number relations relations without any correction factor. So, what is the modified correct modified version of scheduled number? The original scheduled number will be multiplied by the viscosity at the bulk concentration divided by the viscosity at the membrane surface solid concentration at the membrane surface raised to the power 0.27. And since we have already talked about that viscosity is is an increasing function of concentration, then since mu b is equal to mu evaluated at c is equal to c b and mu m is evaluated is, is equal to mu evaluated at c is equal to c m. And we all know that c m is much greater than c b. So, therefore, mu m has to be greater than mu bulk. So, therefore, the factor mu b by mu m raised to the power 0 0.27 is less than 1. So, therefore, uh, this modified Sherwood number after viscosity selected correction factor will be less than the value without it. So, value and so, uh, uh, so modified Sherwood number will be less compared to the Sherwood number without selected correction factor. So, that is how the, so, th so therefore, the mass transfer coefficient will be decreased mass transfer coefficient is less than uh, less after incorporation of correction factor. So, next, so that is how the uh, system performance can be predicted in terms of uh, uh, in, ter in terms of uh, by, by, by taking care of property variation within the mass transfer boundary layer. Now, I would like to say one more thing is that if variation if one in tries to encounter the concentration variation on the properties like density as well as the diffusivity and then viscosity all quite important if they are quite important then one can write the seeded correction factor as S H modified is equal to S H naught. One can write, one can combine, there is a non dimensional number that will be combining all these three properties and that what is that number? The number is mid number. So, Smith evaluated at bulk divided by Smith evaluated at membrane surface raised to the power 0.27. So, if once one wants, uh, wants to you know consider the property variation of all density, diffusivity and viscosity, then one can include the speed number at, at bulk concentration divided by speed number at membrane surface concentration raised to the 0 0.27 as a selected correction factor. After this, what we will be looking into? We will be looking into some simplified versions, simplified cases for osmotic pressure control filtration because we have already seen that in an actual case the solution has to be an iterative one through uh, uh, neutron adoption technique. Now, let us look into some of the simplified case cases controlled filtration. So, the first case is uh, uh, we, we consider for all the cases osmotic pressure is a linear function of concentration. So, when the osmotic pressure is linear function of concentration, actually the if you if you consider osmotic pressure as a polynomial of concentration that will include the nonlinearity in the governing in, in the in the in the system and that will be leading to uh, that will preclude to obtain the analytical solution. So, let us look into some simplified cases where an analytical solution is possible and things will be in the very functional vari variation of the uh, uh, independent variable with respect to the dependent one will be clear uh, in front of the eyes of the you know readers. So, let us consider osmotic pressure is a linear function of concentration and when this case can be uh, uh, can arise, this can, can arise in two cases for the salts 
and for dilute concentration of solutes. Okay. So, if that is the case, then we consider the, uh, uh, the case number 1, first uh, no concentration polarization. when the concentration of polarization can be neglected, if you have, if someone has very high turbulence in the system, if the turbulence in the system is very high, then the mass transfer boundary layer thickness will be, uh, will be gone and the whole mass transfer boundary layer will be properly mixed up. It is a thorough mixed up system and there is no polarization of concentration from the bulk to the membrane surface. So, there exists no concentration of polarization, everywhere it is the bulk concentration. So, how will you model in that system? In that case, C m is equal to C naught and one will be having exponential V w by k is equal to 1. Okay. So, permeate flux can be represented as L p del p minus del pi and if you write del pi, del pi will be pi m minus pi p. So, it will be B C m minus C p and C m is equal to C naught in this case. So, L p del p minus b real retention times c naught. So, we know all the values, we know the l p, we know the delta p that is a transmembrane pressure drop, we know the b that is the osmotic coefficient, real retention is known to us, fit concentration is known to us. So, we can get what is the value of v w. So, once you know the value of v w and since c m is equal to c naught from the definition of real retention, one can get the value of c p as c p is equal to c m into 1 minus real retention and C m is equal to C naught in this case. So, therefore, one can get a system prediction uh, quite easily in the case when no concentration polarization where the turbulence is very, very high in the system. Okay. I stop here in this class and then we will be uh, going to the next session looking into some more simplifications and um, uh, then we will be moving over to various other uh, uh, formulations for reverse osmosis nanofiltration system, where the definition of real retention will be replaced by the solution diffusion models and various variants of solution diffusion model in order to get a more realistic situation. Thank you very much.